Uh, my role in Cordair is I'm part of the uh, senior management team. I'm what they call the head of commercial strategy. Um, I have two parts to my job. One part is I head up and run a commercial division called Encore Hospitality Services, which is predominantly dealing with uh, some of the jewels in the Crown in Glasgow, such as the Kelm Grove Art Gallery, City Chambers, Caledon University, uh, sports centres, stadia catering, etc. Glasgow Royal Concert Hall, things like that. So it's quite a prestigious catering division. Um, and the other side of my job is to help nurture and develop a commercial ethos or culture, if you want to call it that, within the other trading divisions uh, throughout Cordia. Initially, it seems that the business units differed in their business culture. For example, Encore was oriented commercially, whereas Care Service more oriented towards community purpose. Are these cultural differences still apparent? What's happened is, as the, the external environment is getting uh, heated up in terms of uh, change drivers coming from central government in terms of economics, then that's driving the agenda for service reform within Cordia, which means that we're stripping back um, some basic um, core assumptions, if you like, that need to be explored and changed to help us introduce more managerial orientated practices within the care sector, commercial practices in the care sector. And what that's doing is revealing, revealing the core strength of that, that ideology, if you like, that difference in cultural form. The question as posed was, what is the revenue, cost and margin, if that's relevant, splits with respect to the three divisions? The split is like this. 10% of the trading goes to Encore, 35% of the trading goes to FM, and the balance goes to Home Care with 5% allocated to head office. Right? That's how we trade. In terms of profit, Encore has a clearly defined prod profit outlook. Okay? And then they have a fairly complicated... Uh, accountancy model that they use for actually billing costs and deducting income. But part of that model is we have to achieve certain cash sales targets in the school meals, which are used to reduce the end bill to education, follow me? And that's performance related. But in home care, it's about there's a budget, you get your management overhead, and the game in town is not to exceed that budget. That also applies within the educational contracts. So there is no such thing as loss, there is just overspend. So profit as a traditional understanding is, is, is a fairly complicated thing in our, our domains. How independent is the Cordia management in making business decisions and strategic decisions, or is it heavily dependent on the council? And the under, underlying theme here, isn't it, is where do these big decisions lie? If you're saying that we are going to go and merge with company Y because we think there's leverage in that, we can influence the council by presenting the business case to do that. But the council will decide whether we do that. So it's the scale of risk, but not necessarily financial. It's the scale of risk in how your actions are interpreted by the media and how that then influences or affects the constituents out in the wards in Glasgow, and then how that affects the councils and the politicians. So the, it's really to do with how you define a, a business decision, the bread and butter decisions, making investments, pursuing contracts. We can deal with that. Reversal of terms and conditions, introducing performance related pay, joining up with external bodies, we need to square that with our political masters. Has Fergus been successful injecting, in injecting a private sector, in, in injecting private sector thinking into what is a traditionally public sector focused organisation? So within the local authority network in Scotland, again I wouldn't dismiss it, if you take the local market of Glasgow as a local authority, it's two and a half billion. If you take the whole thing in Scotland, you're into 10 or 12 billion. So the market's huge that we're involved in, right? So within that market, and that's an interesting one, because we now think of local authorities, not as local authorities, but as markets, which is a change for us, right? So what he's done is he's created an, a, a perception within the, the main players within that market that Cordia is commercial. 
and it's like a new model. It's, uh, it's almost a third way. It's betwixt and between commercial and private. And it, it has this competence that it understands the culture of public sector bodies, so we can work with you and help solve your problems. And we can create business reform without upsetting the cultural apple cart. A lot of people are buying into that. So it's work in progress. Is that there's, a, there's a process of gradual evolution going on here. But I would say he's done a better job at it than any leader in the public sector that I'm aware of up there at the moment. So, is Cordia geared up to face private sector competition? If you talk about, do we have the marketing skills? Yes. Do we have the competencies in the sectors? Care sector, commercial catering, FM sector? Yes. Can we form the innovative alliances? Yes. Do we have the technologies? Yes. Are our productivity standards comparable broadly? The key problem for us is our unit pay is early rate repair staff, which is 23% above the going rate of a manual worker in the Scottish marketplace. And that was the result of an um, equal pay dispute. And that's an issue for us. Let's take the three industries, care, cleaning, commercial catering. Right? In the cleaning sector, when you put in a contract, let's say a 10 million cleaning contract in a hospital, a lot of these cleaning contracts are sometimes up to 25 years with the PFIs. So you could be looking at a cleaning budget of 5 million a year, multiplied by 25 years, Okay, becomes a £125 million contract, right? You go in with an early rate of £8.37 with uh, a full six months sick pay, six months half sick pay, and a 10% contribution to pension vis-a-vis -vis company X that's going in at £6 an hour, doesn't pay the first three days, doesn't have a company pension scheme, doesn't pay for public holidays, the differentials in the bid are enormous, and that's a problem for us. So if company X comes in for a public sector contract like ours, bearing in mind we, we, we settled out of court the biggest single paying grading dispute, equal pay dispute in the history of the UK, followed by the biggest two pay transfer, 98% are female in, the, in, in what you would call the poverty jobs. Okay? out in the housing estates in Glasgow, transferred under 2 pay. If that was to get outsourced, the only way they could bring it back to six or seven pound an hour is by reversing those terms and conditions, the private, private sector. And that would, that would be a media issue of a fairly, fairly large scale in Scotland. And the question is whether the, the people behind these contracts, the councillors and, and, uh, and the administrational leaders are, are ethically prepared to do that. Because there is an ethical question. Because as much as people think it's all about competition and, and whatnot, what you're talking about is taking people from fairly tough backgrounds and stripping them back to the poverty level to run a business. We are saying we are not in that business. So trade with us. Where does Cordia want to position itself in three to five years' time? Part of a council or an independent business unit or what? We have an ambition that Cordia, and we hope it's not a naive ambition, that Cordia can retain a lot of its sense of civic responsibility, right? But can use a lot of the techniques from the commercial sector and a lot of managerial techniques to improve the way resources are managed. So that, it may sound rather idealistic, so that we have the best school meal service in the country for our children. That our mothers and fathers, when they need care, get the best standards of care. And, but that we create a culture where people that are, are managers and staff and who are enjoying reasonable standards of living out of that enterprise realise that they have a duty to excel in what, they're, in what they're doing. Can you make the Cordia strategy more explicit and how much time do you, do you have to put it into effect? To protect and contain what we have at the moment and to reform it, to reduce the cost and increase the productivity to make the services better, okay? So protect, reform, and, and on top of that, to build new income streams with high profits in relative to our understanding high profits and build new businesses, the profits of which can either be returned to Cordia to be reinvested in the business or return to the council 
to discount the overall cost of the care service. Are you able to compare your levels of productivity with competition? Uh, and if so, how do they compare? We're very close to our industry partners. But when we call them partners, we know them. So the people that run the care services, the catering, including companies in Scotland, we know who they are. But through Fergus in particular, we know them UK, right? So if you strip back our pay rates from 8.30 an hour down to minimum wage at £6, our margins are the same. Our head office costs are the same. <laughs> our food costs are the same. So our, our PIs, performance indicators, are, 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 are distorted because of the, the pay rate. But the actual margins, if you bring it back to what the private sector are paying, are the same. So our productivity levels are very similar. You emphasise training a great deal in terms of your capabilities in the organisations, but, but what apart from the training yeah. would you regard as being the key capabilities of Cordia in what it's doing? Yeah. We don't have shareholders in a traditional sense. So if, let's say Sodexo goes and puts in a bid, right? They put in a bid saying they have to make 11% for head office of the turnover, then 3 or 4% for their trading division. You're nodding away there, right? So they have to make, say, 14 points on net trading, right? The reason they need 11% for head office is they're distributing some of those profits to shareholders as dividends. We don't have that problem. It's not a problem for us, right? Our shareholders are our staff or our customers, right? So we have an ability to, to offset the differential in pay rates in our bids by reducing the level of profit we need from the contracts. And that's an advantage to us. And when you explain that to clients who, who are coming from an, a background where social equity is more important to them, becoming more important in procurement, and you're offering, let's take it as a social enterprise model, which is about fully reinvesting your profits back into the business and the community, taking a lesser return, that gives you a competitive advantage in some cases because the narrative is more attractive to the buyer. Apart from the Cordia way, in what ways have you personally engaged in developing Cordia's strategy? So far over 300 managers have spent the better part of five months working on this process. Um, and I think what the Cordia way has done is it's enabled other forms of conversation to take place at a, a more conceptual level to introduce different types of talk, which, which can't, be, can't be diminished. That if you can broaden the ideas and use in the way you talk about things, then you broaden the opportunities for changing things. So I think the Cordia Way's created the seeds for something that could, if it's not, should be quite special. The other side of things, I've been a big advocate, I keep banging on about management development. We've got a pilot programme, MBA programme going on, which is a, a new thing for us. And we're also uh, launching various other team-based initiatives throughout the business. Question. What have been the outcomes of the Cordia Way programme that have been implemented so far, and what is the current status of the programme? Phase one and phase two completed. 280 managers participated in the programme. Um, full senior management team was fully involved as mentors. Um, we created 24 change leaders, 24 changes, change teams to 10, and we've now had 24 change programmes agreed by the Cordia board, ranging from, we looked at the John Lewis model, one team looked at the John Lewis model, and they looked at the way they do the staff consultation and communication. They have staff forums all over the place, and staff representatives on the main board, and they put forward that as a change initiative, and we've accepted it. So it's fairly significant. So there's 24 change projects on the go, but here's the interesting thing. We came to the end of year two, and the view of the management team was not to continue with the Cordia way. And the view of that, it was quite interesting, was that they felt cultural change had been achieved because there had been no industrial action. We had successfully to be transferred. The Cordia brand had settled down. We tampered around the edges with terms and conditions. We'd put in our new management structures. And they felt the emphasis had to be put on the, the, the improvement of productivity on the ground. So we had 300 home care managers 
Each home care manager looked after a team of 10. We broadened the span of control to 20. I was talking to, to, to Professor Johnson about this this morning. Now, once we've, so we let 150 go through voluntary redundancy. Now what we've got to do is make sure the service works. You with me? So the view of the people in charge of home care was they couldn't do all that and send another 45 or 50 or 60 managers onto a 20-week programme for the Cordia Way. So a decision was taken to, to call it a day after phase two, but to then take the legacy of it and create what we've called the Cordia Conversation. And the Cordia Conversation is an extension of the Cordia Way, but it takes a lot less time, but it's aimed at groups of 15 managers, team leaders, who meet with a whole range of different people and what we're trying to do is establish organisational-wide dialogue with people, as opposed to talking to people, but talking in dialogue, in dialogue groups, to try and advance our service reform agenda. So that's where we are.